Hi folks, welcome to part two of Herniated Disc Recovery, my story. Today I'm gonna to get down and dirty and we're gonna be going over some of the exercises, stretches, activities, things that I use myself to recover from a herniated disc without going under the knife, without getting surgery. Now before we get into that though, if you are enjoying the content I bring to you guys on a regular basis, please hit that subscribe button, okay? I try to keep good content people out there suffering from lower back issues. Please help me create content for you. All right, folks, let's get into today's video. Okay, folks, so today I wanna to go more into my recovery from a herniated disc, more into my own personal story. Um, if you've not checked out part one, I would recommend you please do so. It's gonna give you a nice overview of what happened to me, you know, how the herniation occurred, when it occurred, um, some of the early processes I went through, re-injuring myself, uh, and then having to sort of establish, I need to you know, sort things out, uh, and sort of putting in plan, you know, a, a good system of, of rehabilitation to bring me back to full health again. Today, I wanna to dig in a bit more into the actual, what I did, what was it I was actually doing, when was I doing it, et cetera, to really give you guys, you know, some hope, because of course, this video, I'm trying to tell you my story that it is possible to come back from herniated discs, bulging discs, sciatic and nerve pain. Um, I had all that, right? And I am back, okay? So first thing you must understand is injuries can occur for a number of different reasons. They can be an acute injury, like we fall over, break our arm, we're in a car accident, you know, we have a spine damage. Um, but more often than not, a lot of injuries still also happen over a cumulative load. So it's something we've done a little bit incorrectly or we've got an imbalance in the body and we do it for 10, 15, 20 years. And then one day, some small little thing happens and as they say, the straw that breaks the camel's back, we have this ah surge of pain and something happens and then we the full injury manifests itself. Now, very often it's difficult to say what exactly was the root cause. It could have been bad technique with your activity, your sport, it could have been something you were born with, a slight you know, adjustment in your spine, it predisposed you to certain injuries. But you always have to sort of think, well, no matter what that was, let's try to get the person better, okay? We wanna make you feel better, right? That should be their only goal is feeling better, having no pain, okay? So myself, okay, I had herniated L5S1, bulging disc, uh, L4, L5 as well, stenosis, very, uh, various other issues. I also had a lot of static and nerve pain running down my leg. So how to go about, how did I sort of start my recovery process? Well, yes, okay, I was a trainer at the time, okay, a strength coach rehabilitation specialist. I learned from a lot of different specialists. I just started doing a course with a man called Guy Boyer. Um, he teaches El Doa, which is a method of localized decompression stretches. And maybe I was just lucky, maybe it was just, uh, you know, a, a fate perhaps but I was surrounded by a lot of good people and I learned a lot of good things at that stage in my life. So I put in practice a plan. I knew I had to get back, okay, to full strength, but it wasn't gonna happen overnight, right? They always say you have to uh, learn to walk before you can run. And I knew this myself. It had been an accumulative load injury. It had happened over time. So to get myself back, it was gonna take some time. Now there was various things that I did. I changed the way I moved, so my daily activity, my movements, okay? I wanted to protect my spine as much as possible. The reason for that is if you have a disc herniation, the disc is bulging out, and you flex the spine forward, you're gonna irritate that disc, okay? So you wanna to try to keep the spine in a neutral position as much as possible. You wanna to try to remove the load off the spine so you're not bending down to pick things up off the floor uh, with a flexed spine. So I had to change the way I moved. And even if the activity didn't hurt me to do the movement. So I said last time I was picking a pencil off the floor, it was very small, it doesn't weigh anything, right? But I was picking that pencil up with correct posture. I was hip hinging, keeping my back flat. Um, it didn't matter how light the object was. I was aligning myself with the object. I wasn't twisting, bending, because all those things were putting stress on the disc, which being injured was not going to help its healing time, okay? So I changed the way I moved. Um, I also wanted to encourage um, the disc to reabsorb. So I was doing a lot of decompression stretches, I'll talk about those in just a minute, which were trying to sort of decompress my spine to give the chance for that disc to reabsorb back into the space. They also helped with the stability, the segmental stability of my spine to actually keep my spine nice and rigid when I was moving around and doing uh, various activities. I also removed stressors. So what do I mean by that? Well, I was a big workout guy, super active, right? I did not touch serious weights, weight training for six months post-injury, right? Six months. 
Now, when you're working in a gym and you're surrounded by weights and you're actually training people, that's really hard to do, right? So, you know, I'm watching people, uh, you know, I'm training them, I'm having to tell them, well, oh, please lift up the weights, do this exercise because I couldn't lift it, right? You're in amongst all that environment and you cannot do a thing, okay? That was very hard, uh, it was quite depressing, um, but I kept my eye on the goal, I trusted the process of the exercises and activities that I was doing, and I got there in the end, okay? So I changed the way I moved. Um, I was in decompression stretches um, and I removed stressors. So that being, as I said, you know, the weight training, high impact activities, I removed all of those things from my daily life. So what would I do? Okay, typically, uh, because I was suffering, I had a herniated disc, I did have um, static and nerve pain. So typically in the morning, when I would get up, I would do the McKenzie maneuver first. And the McKenzie, Robin McKenzie was a famous New Zealand uh, physiotherapist, had a lot of success with um, back problems. And I would do this McKenzie move where I would get out of bed and then for the first two minutes of the day, I would lay face down, I was prone on the floor, and I would basically prop myself, I would either put my head on top of my forehead like this, or I'd prop myself up on my forearms, and I would just stay in that position. Now, I'm gonna put a video in the comment section, or, or, sorry, in the section of the video here, you'll see, and that's an explanation of the McKenzie push-up. Um, you can learn all about how to do it there, okay? So that was the first thing I would do in the morning. I would do that particular movement. Hold it for two minutes. Uh, the theory behind it um, that can help if it's a posterior disc bulge, it could potentially help sort of get that disc to go back in and reabsorb into the space, okay? So that was my first uh, kind of move of the day. Then I was going back to work at the stage, which was after my first 10, 14 days of absolute agony with, with uh, sciatic and nerve pain. So I was, I was taking pills at this stage. I would go to work and quite often between sessions, I would do decompression work. Now the decompression stretches I, were, I was focusing on was my L5S1, which was the site of the disc injury. I was also working on my sacrum area and I was also working on the, the discs above the injury site. I was trying to basically create a lot of decompression amongst that uh, lumbar area of my spine. And again, in the section, I'll put down the L5S1 decompression video. You can go and check that out for yourselves. I would do that particular decompression stretch anywhere from three, five, six times a day. Yeah? If I only did it one time in the day, I would do it before I went to bed. So I'd brush my teeth, you know, had the shower, whatever, you know, kiss the cat. I'm joking, I'm a cat, I'm joking. Um, but I would do, do those decompression stretches and then I would get into bed. I'm just trying to set my spine in a good position before I went to sleep uh, for the evening. Along the decompression stretches, I was also doing uh, general what they call fascial stretches for around my hips, my glutes, my hip flexors, uh, that surrounding area. Um, just because when you have an injury, this happens to many, many people, myself included, um, when you have pain, you tend to kind of hitch up, you hike up because you're trying to protect, you're trying to find a good position where you don't have pain. And as a result of that, sometimes, your musculature will get out of balance. You know, one side will get over tight, one side gets a bit loose, your, your pelvis gets all twisted. So because our pelvis, you know, connects, of course, our legs to our back, I was trying to maintain uh, good mobility through my hips. So when I was walking, you know, I was moving around the daily basis that there was no excess stress going up into my spine. So I would do a variety of different stretches, mainly fascial stretches, because the fascia compresses the muscle tissue, um, for the front of my hip region, my glutes, inside of my thighs as well. And again, I'll put another video uh, below, okay, for you guys to check out one of those stretches as well for you. So I would do those uh, probably two to three times a day as well. And as I said, I was trying to, I knew this was a long journey, okay, and I had to put a lot of work in because it had been a long journey to get me to that injury. I had to put a lot of work in to get myself back, okay, to be healed again. Now, as far as changing my movements, so I just mentioned, um, I would consciously, when I was lifting a pencil, a pen, uh, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever it would be, I would get very close to the object, okay? I would hinge my hips back, I'd keep my back flat, take the object, lift it up, move it over. I wouldn't, you know, I would sort of move uh, and then I would turn my whole body so I wouldn't be twisting my spine because when you rotate the spine, that actually creates decompression, uh, sorry, creates compression on your disc. So it completely changed the way I moved. Now, people thought, <laughs> what's wrong with this guy? Like, he looks like a robot walking around, okay? But I knew I had to do it because it was taking the stress off the disc. I was trying to give the correct or the most optimal conditions for that disc to reabsorb. Because here's the thing, in most cases, the disc does reabsorb, okay, naturally. But you have to put your body in the right position for that to heal. 
Now, I knew this. I'd read the literature, you know, spoke with some various uh, experts. I understood what I had to do. So I trusted the process and I went ahead, I went ahead and did it. I made a mistake in the beginning, okay, um, in that I thought I was all good in the first few months. You know, I hadn't really looked into this properly and I re-injured myself. And that's when I went, okay, you got to, you know, you're a critical thinker, look at this from a critical, you know, thought point of view. And I dialed things back and I basically changed my whole approach. And the movement thing was a very big thing. And again, I'll put another link down there for you guys below. Um, research has been done on avoiding flexion before noon. So I was very conscious of doing no spinal flexion, okay, um, throughout my day. Generally, actually, I would do it for most of the day, okay, it, minimum up until like lunchtime, one o'clock, then I might do a little bit of flexion. But I was trying to minimize any flexion of that lumbar spine. I did not want to aggravate that disc in any shape or form. Now, Please understand, flexion of the spine is normal, okay? I flex my spine completely fine now, right? But back then, I was trying to create the right environment for my disc to heal. Therefore, I removed flexion, okay, for the majority of my day, all right? And again, you'll see the link um, in the uh, section down below under the video. You can go and check out that particular video as well about that, okay? Now, the other thing which was really hard for me to do, of course, was removing weight training, okay? So what did I do? Well, initially, for those first few weeks, I was doing my decompression stretches. I was doing my kind of hip, you know, if you want to call it hip stretching work. Um, but I was also doing some core work. And I was just doing very basic stuff, uh, maybe three times a week, four times a week. I would do some front planking, okay, once a day to hold yourself in the front plank. Um, I would do, be doing the side plank. Um, and I was sort of focusing on, on bracing them to brace my abdominals. I wasn't doing any, you know, lifting dumbbells. I wasn't doing any, you know, squats, obviously, deadlifts, nothing like that, okay? My initial stages was just learning to brace my core, engaging, you know, my glutes. I would do some work, uh, my legs on top of a physio ball. I would squeeze my glutes, lifting my hips up and down, squeezing, just keeping, you know, my, my glutes activated, a little bit of work in the glutes, core, trying to help stabilize my spine. And I didn't really touch the weights again until four months, six months. I would do, uh, sort of, you know, uh, bicep curls or triceps, very, very basic stuff. I didn't want to put myself in a position where I was like under a lot of tension because that is going to compress the spine. Yeah. So early days, it was just core work that I was doing. And again, down below, I'll give you guys a nice beginner core uh, video you can check out as well. Now, one of the other things uh, was actually drinking more water. Now that sounds, what do you mean? Well, the disc itself, is 90% water, right? I was doing a lot of stretching. The, the fascia, the tissue I was stretching is 90% water. So I wanted to make sure I was well hydrated um, during this time because you know, a lot of us, you know, like it or not, we don't drink enough water, just pure water. So I was starting maybe two and a half liters of, of pure water a day. I worked my way up to about three and a half, four liters of water. I did it steadily because you will know if you do too much water at one time, you're gonna be up all night peeing, right? So I didn't want that. So I basically just took you know, a little 200 milliliter bottle, added one of those in um, extra for a week or two weeks, and then added another one in uh, a couple of weeks after that, and I gradually built it up. And I would drink most of my water before so 6 p.m. in the day, so I wasn't having to get up all night three, four times <laughs> to have a pee in the middle of the night. So increasing my water intake was also something I think really helped me as well. Probably the biggest benefit, the biggest help for me was the actual decompression stretches, okay? I think they really helped me get my disc to reabsorb, uh, to remove the sciatica nerve pain. Now, in regards to sciatica, um, when I was stretching around my, my hips, that was definitely helping me. The decompression stretches were definitely helping me as well. And I also did nerve glides. And nerve glides or nerve flossing, you may have heard, it's where you basically sort of glide, you do movements with your leg and your head and your back to help glide the nerve, okay? So you're basically stretching, not stretching, sorry, you're running it through its track where, um, where it moves in the body. And if there's been some scar tissue or like, you know, excessive tension created from an injury before, you're just helping that nerve sort of start to glide again. I do believe they helped me as well. Um, I do have a specific video on stretches for static and nerve pain. So again, down below, there'll be a link there. You can go and check out that video uh, as well. And essentially, I basically built this little routine, okay? So I was up in the morning, I was doing my Kenzie move. Then through the day, I was doing my decompression stretches, my hip stretches, I was doing my nerve glides, I was doing my core work sort of three, four times a week. And that was pretty much uh, me for the first sort of like month, two months, three months, four months. And then I slowly started to bring in, you know, sort of arm curls and such. And then at the six month mark, 
Um, my, you know, the, the nerve pain is completely gone. Um, I would still feel it sometimes on long car journeys or if I was slumped in a you know, strange position at the movies or on a, on a, you know, a train or something like that, a plane. Um, but it was after the six month point I started to really kind of load my spine. I'd hold heavy dumbbells in my hands. Um, but I was still doing a lot of you know, more advanced sort of braced uh, moves. And even to this day, I still do decompression stretches, especially after I've been squatting or deadlifting. Uh, because there's going to be more videos that are going to flash up on the screen, right? Yes, I am back to full health, okay? There's some videos I'm going to be, there's a, it's a 55 kilo dumbbell that I was like um, hang snatching there. Uh, there's a deadlift going on there. That's, oh, I can't remember, it was 305 kilos or something like that. That's a top range trap bar deadlift. Um, some other various other videos are going to pop up, just me throwing things around. So I have full movement, you know, um, you know I have no issues with my back anymore, no issues with my sciatica pain anymore. And... You know, part of the reason um, that I do these videos is to let people know that there is hope because, you know, 80% of us will experience lower back pain in our time from herniated discs, strains, pulls, whatever. And a lot of people go down a dark hole, okay? Depression, they can't do their sports anymore, they can't play with their kids anymore. And I'm trying to create these videos to say, look, there is hope, okay? There is hope. You can come back with it, from it, sorry. You know, I had the chance of surgery, okay? I didn't do surgery, all right? I did this completely naturally um, but I had to understand and you have to understand it's a it's a journey okay I've had people remove their back pain in less than two weeks seriously I have okay they were like shocked and stunned yeah because all these different principles that I've learned over the years from my own experience I've kind of packaged now because I know what works I know what's going to get results and you can put it together in a much more sort of you know controlled format and one of the videos is going to flash up at the end of this video actually which is a very useful guide for people to go and check out. It's a little AM, PM routine that I put together for people out there suffering from lower back problems. And it incorporates some of the stuff that I've just been uh, speaking about. Um, and it basically teaches you what to do in the morning, you know, and what to do in the evening before you go to bed to put yourself in the best position to, you know, relieve your chronic back pain, herniated disc pain, sciatica nerve pain, etc. So wait to the end of this video and it's gonna pop up and you can go and check it out there, okay? So yeah, guys, so listen, you know, back to this again, as I said, you know, in below you're gonna have the McKenzie uh, work that I did, decompression work that I did, nerve glides, I was doing stretching for my, um, you know, my hip region, my sciatica nerve pain, I was avoiding flexion, you know, and all of this was packaged. I basically did all of this as one um, big package to bring me back, okay, from that point of potential surgery, you know, searing sciatica nerve pain. So it is very possible, it can be done, okay? so. If you're out there thinking, is my, you know, is my life over? Is this turning to just the end of me? No, it's not, okay? I can speak from experience, no, it's not. You can be back to your old self. You just gotta put the time in, put the commitment in, yeah? And in next week's video, I wanna do a part three. I wanna tell you about where I am today. Actually, you know, what's happened to me, what I've done with what I've learned, who I've been helping, um, you know, oh, I've got some other things in my body that have happened to me since then as well. I want to tell you about how I recovered from those. Um, so stay tuned, guys, okay, for, for next week's video. But listen, if you do have any questions, concerns, you're struggling yourself there at home with your lower back pain issues, hit me up in the comment section, okay? Don't be afraid to ask me questions. I always reply to the comments. Um, so if you're sitting at home suffering, okay, don't suffer alone, right? I'm here to create content to help you guys out there, okay? Guys, I hope this was useful and inspirational for you. Please like and share, and I'll talk to you again next week. Have a great day.